am directly going to be um, shadowing Del Toro, which I said is the 32nd top speaker in the world of this next year. That means a lot of things. I'm probably not even supposed to say this. Sorry, Del. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sharing it, and Ooh. that means events. That means what? Well, it means things I don't even know yet, honestly. Um, as, as well as traveling, <laughs> traveling out the country. She knows. I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to ask her. Know. But. <laughs> the point is, it's going to be a wonderful experience, and she's still a part of this experience. Keynote, full throttle, all that. Um, so please, talk about what, what's going on with you. So, um, well, first of all, I don't have an event coming up yet, um, but I have a big vision that I want to, that's going to come to pass in 2017. Um, and it's a single mom's conference that's going to bless single moms in a way that they have, they don't even, they don't even realize. They don't even realize. I see the conference. I see the sponsors coming. I see, and that's part of what you have to do. What you believe in your mind, what you, what you see, what God gives you in your heart, you have to make it come to pass and make it manifest because there are single moms out there that are waiting for me to do this conference to bless them. So that's coming up, so stay tuned. Um, the, um, so I'm going to talk about the book that I was in, Voices of Inspiration, of course, with um, Marlon Smith. But there are several, these stories are like absolutely amazing. This came from the urban arena and made it out. The most powerful thing I remember is that my grandmother at 11 years old, she said, God's going to do something in your life. My mom was a single parent of six sons and one daughter. And so when I look at what, where I'm at, I see that there's nothing that I cannot do with the help of God and, and the amazing people that I'm connected to. My wife and I, we've been blessed to serve uh, in doing marriage conferences and marriage retreats. Uh, I'm a former pastor, but I'm still a pastor. I'm not passing a church right now. But some of the things that I've been able to do, it's been because I've been understanding my talent, my gifts, and not only that, to help people reach their pinnacle in their lives to walk. I do men's retreats. You know, I teach men how to understand their place in the home. I'm a big component of family. I'm a big component that if you have the right tools, that your wives should not feel that they're not important. And I teach this philosophy that in my conferences that I do, that the man is the giver and the wife is the receiver. Because if you plant in her, then she will, she will double back that to you. You give her good stuff double times, you're going to get tripled. I, I, I may be talking to you about, <laughs> about getting some things that on, on that in that area. But... It's a pleasure to do these events because I, I mean, I'm, I'm a creative person, so I love putting together stuff. I, I used to work in television. I love the production aspect of it. And so I, and, and putting together an event like that and being able to see how it can come together and how everybody can get something out of it, and not, not just from the audience, from the speakers as well, to see them be able to get their message out to people. And, and feel that you know that they're getting something out of it as well. So I enjoy doing that. I've done I've done several of them. We have a Passion of Prophets Atlanta coming up in February. We probably have another one coming up here in, in March. So I'll stay tuned. In terms of my company, Lightning Fast Book Publishing, I'm losing count. I maybe have between 50 and 60 authors right now. Um, it's just been a tremendous blessing to have authors not have to go through the stuff that I went through when I first got started. I spent an inordinate amount of money trying to publish my first book. I learned a lot. It was all planned, it was all destiny. And now, everything's in-house. Your editors, your designers, web designers, uh, the e-book e creation, we print, we ship all over the world. I have international clients. We ship books uh, to the Philippines, United Kingdom, it doesn't matter. If you have an international engagement, they'll be there when you get there. Um, this particular gentleman, I want to focus on him before I uh, leave. This is Stuart Stevens Sr. He worked at the White House for 34 years. He's the author of the White House Chandeliers. Within, I'd say, four or five months of his book coming out, he was featured in the Washington Post on October the 5th because of this book. And then uh, he was recently featured on C-SPAN. And you can catch him on Christmas Eve. He has three more interview airing dates 
And um, my authors are doing amazing, amazing things, but it's not just particular to them. If we all take that step and we say yes to whatever's inside of us, there's amazing things that we have to deliver to this world. You know? I think that sometimes we are missing out on just that, the, the gentle side of love. There's so many things that are, um, you talk about the physical and you know all the other things, but I think that we need to get back to the healing part of love. You know, when you're having a bad day, when you lose a family member, when things are really just hurting you at work, that you want to come home and not just be taken care of physically, you want to be taken care of in, in an emotional standpoint. So, When I'm Loving You is a novel that I wrote that is it, written love after tragedy. And it got great, got great feedback. And I remember somebody told me that you're not a real author. This is what somebody told me, not that I believe it. But they told me that you're not a real author unless your book is in a bookstore. And so I was, I was, that was when I first started writing. So I was really disappointed. I'm like, oh man. But someone called me when Borders was in Largo and said, hey, I see your book on the shelf. And I'm like, you're lying. And I remember me and my friends rushing to the bookstore, taking pictures of the shelf, getting people in the store to buy the book. And I was able to make, um, build a really great rapport with the, um, the bookstore owner. And he allowed me to do my poetry book reading there. And my, my, um, I did a book discussion. Make sure that we, whatever that thing is, we see that that talent or that gift, push them in that gift, walk alongside them, and say to them, you know, you can do this. And that's the thing as parents. So I, I was going to talk about what I had coming up in um, St. Martin's. You know, someone when you talked about the media, and a friend of mine saw what we were doing on because of. Um, Facebook and the internet and said, look, you're dealing with health, I'm dealing with cervical cancer, can we do something together in St. Martin's? Can I put together something, you can bring some people down, it will be like a retreat, I'll get the venue and everything, you get the people and you bring them down. Wow. There's those kinds of things when you said social, that just happened. Right. But when you said that, you made me think about that. These are the things that social media will Make do possible. for us. Yes, yes, absolutely. When we are out there. But if we're not out there, they won't see us. Words, yeah. words. Okay, but I want to take it to the streets now. And I'm not taking over. Just bear with me for a moment. Synergy. Mm. Remember that word? Yes. yes. You know what synergy means? Yes. I can't do it alone. Yes. Right. Charles can't do it alone. Matthew right. Barrett can't do it alone. None of us can do it alone. If we don't come together collectively now, not tomorrow, now, so many people are going to miss out on what our gifts are. And I say to people all the time, I'm only talking about my organization, but you have no idea who I know in so many different fields that our children, our elders, and our adults need today. Someone needs to save their home from being lost. Yes. Someone needs to get some health benefits. Someone needs a job. I mean, I love Rosa, but I'm a federal government employee. And I am a public servant by heart. The point is, you don't know who I know. You don't know who each person that Charles had brought together today on his platform, who they know, not just knowing them, but knowing how they can help someone in need. Take it to the bank. So, so it's about, it's about us folks. It's about us as individuals and then what you're gonna find out is that it's really not about us. It's about us giving what's been given to us. The gifts that reside within all of us do not belong to us. It's for us to nurture, nourish, and then share. Uh, it's about creating those legacies. Uh, it's very important. I know I've heard Matthew said he's an entrepreneur because of his father. Uh, I heard uh, someone else mention something very similar to that. Arlene also mentioned that. I, mean, I didn't realize that my dad, you know, he was an entrepreneur. He played numbers, and every time he hit the number, he bought something and he wound up getting real estate and he had rumors and you know I didn't even think about that until I was already an entrepreneur as a musician putting on my own events and then that bled into other things and going to casting calls and now my daughter is on the verge of writing her first book my 
granddaughter is in her first year of college. So my point is, it's up to us to create these legacies. And even if you don't have children, you can still create the legacy of you. You know, it's not too late, it's never too late. I remember maybe, oh gosh, in the 70s and 80s, seeing senior citizens graduating college. So I don't believe in, it's too late or now, you know what I was going to do. Oh, you know, I used to be good. No such thing, no such thing. There's always someone waiting to hear your story. Someone waiting to hear your story the way you tell it, the way you write it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that everyone is supposed to write a book. No, but you still have a story. 